In 2013, Shauna Shanks was a month shy of celebrating her 10-year anniversary when her husband calmly asked for a divorce. Two weeks later, he admitted to having an affair. Though her husband was telling her their marriage was over, God was saying something else. God was tasking me to do the hardest thing I'd ever done, loving my husband. In her book, A Fierce Love, Shauna shares why she's telling the world about his affair and what she relied on to restore their marriage. Shauna Shanks joins us now. Welcome to Interactive. It's great to have you with us Hi, today. Hi, thanks. Good to be here. This news from your husband was such a shock to you that you actually laughed at first. I mean, you thought he was joking. <laughs> yeah. Did you have no idea that your marriage was struggling to the point of him considering something like I didn't know it? our marriage was struggling at all because, you know, I just had gotten used to the way that things were. Um, my husband came from um, a very traumatic childhood, so he's never been overly affectionate with me. Uh -huh. So, but it was never cause for alarm. That was just, you know, some couples are like that, and I just yeah. thought we we just weren't overly touchy feely and that yeah. sort of thing. But he's always, you know, always respected me and always I felt loved by him. Yeah. So this news really caught me off guard. Well, and it wasn't just news that he wanted out of the marriage. I mean, it was news delivered yeah. with the, I've already made the decision. It was cold and calm. There was no reconciliation discussion did that shock you yeah I mean it was like an out-of-body experience for me um, because he didn't just say I want a divorce he said I've never loved you he said I'm not attracted to you and I haven't been for a long time wow. and I, I was really embarrassed because he acted you know shocked that I didn't already know this yeah. um, you were so vulnerable I'm mm. sure you felt very attacked by the whole thing. Yeah. God gave you at that point, because you really fell apart mm. at, at the, the moment this was delivered, God gave you two words mm. to hang on to. What were they? Hope and endure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Endure wouldn't have been too exciting to me. Hope might have <laughs> lit a flame. How did you handle well, that? Well, the endure part, I actually thought, okay, I can do hard things. Like I can endure. The hoping was actually the challenge because in a situation like that, I think it's our human instinct to lash out yeah. and to close up and become hardened. Because if you become hardened, then you don't have to kind of deal with those feelings. Mm -hmm. But the hoping was just hoping that this marriage would work was really hard it because it kept me vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. God also gave you 1 Corinthians 13. And I love what you said in the book because you said, I've read that God. I mean, like mm -hmm. I get it, I know it. But but none of us really do get it mm -hmm. until we're put to the test, do we? Yeah, I mean, I was I was literally like, I know you're trying to help God, but I, <laughs> I already know that first. Like I, I'm a church girl, I knew that yeah. growing up. And so, um, yeah, I just thought that's easy. It's patient, it's kind. Um, but when I really started dissecting, you know, that scripture of 1 Corinthians 13 in this new concept, I do say in the book, um, it's easy to give love when you're giving it back. Yeah. But to love somebody in this context, um, yeah. when you are not getting that back, but you've also replaced that not getting it back with rejection, mm -hmm. it's a completely different task than yeah. just loving someone who loves you. The reason that seemed to work for you is because though God gave that verse to you and you would presume it was, okay, this is the simple directive to my husband, it was, he was actually changing you. He was. Yeah, he was definitely changing me in that season because um, the good thing was it took my eyes off of my husband. Yeah. I stopped worrying about what is he doing and worrying about him because it gave me something to do. It was a task. Okay, in this situation of today, what he's telling me, Am I being patient? Am I being kind? Am I being rude? Um, am I being jealous? Am I keeping yeah. a record of wrong? So every before I did anything, I had to kind of go through that list. And what it did was really silence me because <laughs> what I wanted to do wasn't patient and yeah. kind, and it was rude, and it yeah. you know, and it was provoking and all of those things. So it was kind of like God had just given me a chore list to keep me quiet so He could do the work on my husband. Because yeah. I think as women, we want, we're fixers and we want to mm -hmm. fix things. And I'm like, God, put me in. I can, I can do something yeah. good here. But it was really just you work on your list and I will do the work in your husband. Yeah. And I think that's the only reason we were able to reconcile is because God yeah. did work in my husband. You know, one of the other things that that did, it seemed to me, Shauna, clarify this, if you will, was your attitude, because you were obedient to what God was changing in you and showing you, your attitude caused your husband to stay at home during the process of what was dividing and separating and moving away emotionally from each other and even planning the, the physical separation. Do you feel like that was part of why the reconciliation could happen? Because 
he was able to see you walking this out. Mm -hmm. I do think that eventually it did cause him to take notice because he knew my level of crazy, you know, <laughs> and I knew it and he knew it. And so he knew how I should have been responding. Yeah. Um, so at first, I think it made it worse because he had already decided to be out of the marriage. He was in another relationship. And so when it wasn't mutual and I didn't agree to the divorce, I think it really made him mad because yeah. then he could just start over guilt free if it was mutual, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. And so at first it was harder, but then eventually, you know, when he, he kept thinking I was going to snap out of this bubble, like it's going to hit her. She's in denial, you know, that kind of thing. And then weeks went on and God just continued to keep me calm. Um, then you have to take notice of that, of knowing like, I know that's not my wife. That is the working yeah. of a holy God that he's doing that. And when you feel like God is present, you take notice. Yeah. How, how did other people respond to you? Because I think it's so easy to be impacted by the reaction, the anger, the judgment, the frustration for you from other people. What did you get from family and friends? Okay, so my situation is unique because at the beginning I felt like God had prompted me not to tell a bunch of people. Uh, one of the translations, I'm not sure which one in the Bible, because I studied it in every single version. I bet you did. One of the yeah. things in 1 Corinthians it says is love protects. And I wow. felt like if I went and told everyone, my husband's doing all of these things, that doesn't protect and that it's on my list, so I can't do it. And so um, eventually God did, well, pretty early on, direct me to, there was two women, um, and they're in the book, um, Aunt Jan and Shannon, that I confided in, and that really became my constant companions in that time. No one else knew what was going on because wow. I just felt like, not, not to say that that's for everyone, but in my situation, like God was speaking to me direction. Yeah. That's why I was able to do this hard thing because he was speaking me direction every single day of what to do. Yeah, and you were, you were walking in obedience, which is why it worked. And it drove mm -hmm. you closer to the heart of God, mm -hmm. for, not further away from the pain in a sense, but less impacted by the pain because God filled that it's in It's so you. hard to wallow and yeah. to be broken and to be hopeless and to feel defeated in the presence of God. Yes. And I never knew it that way without walking through that brokenness. You know, the Bible says, He is near to the brokenhearted. Yes. I knew that scripture before my mind, but having walking through being brokenhearted, He was so near. And normally I would just think that I would just be a mess like I was at the beginning. Yeah. But when I started seeking the Lord, you know, reading my Bible was coming alive to me, whereas before it was just words. It was like a chore. Mm -hmm. In this season, it was life-giving. And, you know, I would seek God in the quiet and, you know, with praise and worship, with yeah. praying to Him and Him speaking to me. In the presence of God, He didn't abandon me. He didn't leave me alone. And I know that I was empowered in that season. Actually, He didn't abandon you. He empowered you. Mm -hmm. He changed your life, changed your marriage. Your marriage is reconciled. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to say to people who are struggling, if you're going through the hopelessness of infidelity or the pain of divorce, this book is a wonderful one. Your story may not wind up like Shauna's, but the wisdom of how mm -hmm. she walked with God through it made an amazing difference. It's full of wisdom and practice practical advice for the all too re common reality in marriages today. It's available, available wherever books are sold. It's appropriately called A Fierce Love. Thank you. Thanks Great so to much. have you with Thanks us. Thanks for having me.